Hello and welcome to Sunday Catch Up from St James and St Anne's in Bermondsey. If you weren't able to make it to church on Sunday, you're in the right place. Sunday Catch Up comes out every Monday and it features songs and the Sunday Sermon, so you can keep in touch with what's been going on in church. At the moment, we're looking at the life of Abram, later became known as Abraham, starting in Genesis chapter 12. The first sermon about Abram was last week, so you might like to watch last week's Sunday Catch Up if you missed it. This is the second sermon, looking at Abram's journey from Haran, where he was living, to Canaan, which became known as the Promised Land. But before we get into that, our first song. Our Bible reading this week was from Genesis chapter 12, verses 4 to 20. It'd be a great help if you could read that before listening to the sermon, so you might need to pause this video to go and get a Bible. And if you've just been to get a Bible, welcome back. Let's pray together. Heavenly Father, we thank you for your word. As we hear about the story of Abraham and his faith, Grow our faith in us. Help us to trust you more and more so that we live for you each and every day. Amen. Well, in a crisis, it helps to have a plan. Behind the scenes in government and at the police and in the Ministry of Defence, there are experts and strategists and commanders developing plans for what would need to happen in the case of a major disaster or incident. And it's those plans that we hope, God willing, will enable us to cope if something terrible happens. 
Well, you only have to get three chapters into the Bible before something terrible happens. God made us to live under his blessing. But ever since Adam and Eve sinned in the Garden of Eden, we've been living in a world under God's curse. But then last week, in Genesis chapter 12, verses 1 to 3, we heard about God's plan for our world. His plan to roll out blessing to every nation, to push back the borders of that curse until all there is, is blessing. And that plan began with one man called Abram. In Genesis chapter 12, verse 1, it says, The Lord said to Abram, Leave your country, your relatives, and your father's home, and go to a land that I am going to show you. I will give you many descendants. They will become a great nation. I will bless you and make your name famous, so that you will be a blessing I will bless those who bless you, but I will curse those who curse you, and through you I will bless all the nations. So Adam's sin led to global curse, but through one faithful man, God has a plan to bring about global blessing. And he starts by telling Abram to leave his country and his relatives behind and go to a land that God will show him. Today we're focusing on how Abram responded to God. And he responded in two ways. Firstly, with faith, which leads to obedience. But then he acted out of fear, which leads to sin. But through it all, we're going to discover that when we are faithless, God himself always remains faithful. Well, let's begin with Abraham's faith. This is verses four to nine. It begins, when Abram was 75 years old, he started out from Haran as the Lord had told him to do and Lot went with him. Now it couldn't have been easy. He had a lot to leave behind, but Abram went. He said he set out, set out towards a place called Canaan as the Lord had told him to do. He obeyed. And why did he obey? Because he trusted God. He'd heard God's promise and he trusted it. That's what faith is, trusting God. And because he trusted God, Abram and his household walked 450 miles to Haran, from Haran to a place called Shechem without another word from God. But God was about to ask Abram to trust him even more because when he arrived in Shechem, God appeared to Abram and said, this is the country that I am going to give your descendants. So it turns out Abraham hasn't arrived in Canaan as its new owner. It's his descendants who will be given the land. Abram's job is to simply live in a tent in Canaan until the day he dies. Well, maybe he should go back to Haran. This seems crazy, but what does Abram do? He pitches his tent, he builds an altar, and he begins to worship God in Canaan. This is Abraham's response of faith. It's the right response to God. He just trusts him. And the same goes for us. The right response to God is to believe him and to live like we believe him even when the cost is high and there are more comfortable options available. The trouble is, even though God is completely trustworthy and we know we can trust him, our faith, it's often shaken by fear, acting out of fear. Well, that's what Abraham does next. This is verses 10 to the end. You know, God promised, he promised to bless Abram in Canaan. He promised Abram his descendants would be a great nation. But then there was a famine. Remember the empty shelves in the supermarkets at the start of the pandemic? It's scary. Famines are bad news. Wandering about, living in a tent, Abraham had managed to trust God's plan. 
But as the food supplies began to run low, fear crept in, and as a result, he sinned. God had promised to bless him, but when the famine came, what Abram chose to do is rely on Egypt. Verse 10 says there was a famine in Canaan. It was so bad that Abram went farther south to Egypt to live there for a while. And as is so often the case, one sin just leads to another. Egypt had food, but it wasn't exactly safe. Abram knew that the Egyptians wouldn't care if a foreign man was murdered to get access to his beautiful wife. And Abram's wife was beautiful, and so he feared for his life. Let's read from verse 11 about what he's planning to do. When he was about to cross the border into Egypt, he said to his wife, Sarai, you are a beautiful woman. When the Egyptians see you, they will assume that you are my wife, and so they will kill me and let you live. So tell them that you are my sister. Then because of you, they will let me live and treat me well. What a mess. God had promised to bless Abram, but now he's relying on Egypt to look after him even though it involves taking off their wedding rings and pretending that his wife is his highly eligible sister. But from Abram's point of view, afraid of being killed, the plan kind of works. Verse 14 tells us that the king of Egypt himself takes Sarai in to be his wife and treats Abraham really well as a result. He gives him flocks of sheep and goats, cattle, donkeys, slaves and camels. So it seems like Abram's plan has worked, but what does God think when he sees Sarai in Pharaoh's bedroom? While Abram's in Egypt, you know, there's no mention of God speaking to him, no mention of him worshipping God, and as we'll see, he's hardly a blessing to this nation. He might still be alive, but the fact is Abram has got this badly wrong. The wonderful thing is, about God that even when we are faithless, he remains faithful. Remember how God said to Abram, if anyone curses or dishonours him, God would curse them? Well, he did. Verse 17 says, because the king, the king of Egypt, had taken Sarai, the Lord sent terrible diseases on him and on the people of his palace. Then the king sent for Abram and asked him, what have you done to me? Why didn't you tell me that she was your wife? Why did you say she was your sister and let me take her as my wife? Here's your wife, take her and get out. And because God cursed Pharaoh, Abram gets his wife back and the Egyptian border force does them a favour and deports them to Canaan, which is where they should have been all along. And on top of that, Abram gets to keep Pharaoh's sheep and cattle and donkeys and camels. So despite his sin, God brings Abram back to Canaan richer than when he left. He kept his promise to bless Abram and curse those who curse him, even when Abram sinned. Now we know that God is loving and kind, but actually this is a real surprise that he treats Abram this way. Because Adam's one sin led to global curse. So how come sinful Abram could be the bearer of global blessing? And why should we be the receivers of any blessing from God when, like Adam and like Abram, we too often sin? Well, the reason Abram's sin didn't disrupt God's promise is because the promise doesn't depend on Abram, doesn't depend on his son Isaac, his grandson Jacob, or the nation of Israel, or us. Is Isaac, Jacob and Israel, they all inherited this promise too, this promise to be a blessing to the world and to be blessed by God. But God's plan was that ultimately the promise would be inherited by Jesus, because Jesus is the truly faithful one who never gave in to fear. Let's compare Abraham and Jesus for a moment. Abram left his father in Haran and pitched his tent in Canaan. Jesus left his father in heaven 
and as it says in John 1, pitched his tent among us on earth. Abram worshipped God by building altars in the promised land. Jesus carried his cross. Abram sacrificed sheep and goats. Jesus made himself the sacrifice. God promised Abram his offspring would inherit the land and bless the world. Jesus has been made king of the world and poured out the blessing of his Holy Spirit. And when Jesus went for 40 days without food in the wilderness, he didn't give in to fear. Satan tempted him to provide food for himself like Abram did by going to Egypt. But Jesus said, man shall not live on bread alone, but by every word that comes from the mouth of God. In other words, I will eat when God chooses to provide food for me. When Jesus, Jesus faced the deep distress of his impending crucifixion, he said, not my will, but yours be done. Jesus' faith didn't give way to fear. He did not sin. And as a result, through him, the curse is being pushed back and blessing is being rolled out worldwide. In Jesus, God's promises to Abraham are being brought to completion. And so we have far more reason than Abraham to trust God and to resist fear. We know that God keeps his promises because he sent Jesus. We have far more confidence that when we are faithless, God remains faithful. He even sent his son to die to pay the debt of our sins. And we have far more confidence that one day there will be no curse or suffering, but only the blessing of God's presence with his people under the loving rule of our King. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you for your great promise to roll out blessing to the world through a faithful man. That faithful man ultimately wasn't Abraham or Isaac or Jacob, and it's certainly not us. Thank you for sending your son Jesus, who was faithful in life and death, so that we might know you and live forever in a world free of the curse and full of your blessing. We thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. It's time now for our second song, and we'll see you on Sunday Catch Up again next Monday. Goodbye. See